Do you like shrimp? Do you want to be able to keep them successfully? Unlike me? Well, then I think you need to go to shrimpenvy.com and check out all of their amazing products. Whether it's fantastic foods or award-winning shrimp, they have everything you need. And even for someone like me, Bentley, who cannot keep shrimp to save his soul because his rainbow fish are dumb idiots and they eat them all, you can get the amazing shrimp calendar. So you can stare longingly at those beautiful little crustaceans and keep them in pseudo form. Make sure to remember, use code AquariumGuys at checkout. You will save 10% off your entire order. I love Shrimp Envy. I have known the owners for years now, and they are fantastic people who are supporting a company inside the United States. And I can never say anything other than the highest praise for them. So... Even if you're like me and you just want to stare longingly at shrimp, yearning for the day where you actually get to keep them. When you do keep them, go to shrimpbeppy.com. Podcast. Jimmy, I'm so sorry the McRib is gone. Shut up, Mr. Marbles. Mar- Mr. Marbles. Yeah. I'm your host, Rob Zolson. I'm Jim Colby. And I'm Adam El Nashar. So we were going to do a podcast. You know, you schedule these things, you get everything uh, set, you got you think you you dotted the I's, you crossed the T's, and uh, I'll be damned if a microphone jack on the other party's end just, just suddenly explodes in his hand. So Oliver's Aquatic Garden, shout out to you, brother. We're going to have you on next episode, but got to fix that microphone port. So till next time, we'll get you. But for now, we're going to go with a, uh, a pre-done uh, episode pre-done? Th- that Jimmy doesn't know he'd going to cover. I, I did not know that. If, I, right. if I'd have known that, I would have showed up sober. So before I tell you information yes. about uh, more of the topic, we're going to yeah. do some questions, questions to catch up on our email. What are you, the police? Uh, no, we just uh, you've been gone, and there's a couple questions asked <laughs> that I feel like we need to re-review as a, as a whole. But uh, gentlemen, anything on your, your brains? Uh, how was your holiday? How about you, Adam? My holiday was good. Kids were happy. The kids were happy? So you, like, you gave them gifts this year for once or what? Yeah. You know, I didn't hand carve them stuff and make them out of twigs. They got actual toys. Wow. I know. They were pretty happy. I do have a good Christmas story that is a friend of my son's. And I'll, I'll just tell you really quick. Hit us. So they, my son's friends, they're, they're in their 30s, a young couple with two children, and they mess with each other every Christmas. And so anyway... She asked her husband last year, sweetheart, what do you want for Christmas? And he goes, I want a, a Red Ryder BB gun. And she goes, you'll shoot your eye out, kid. And he goes, no, seriously, she, I wanted one for my whole life. Never got one. My parents told me the same damn thing that I shoot my eye out from that stupid Christmas story movie. And I want a Red Ryder BB gun. And so she went out and bought him. This is last year now. She bought him a Red Ryder BB gun, took the gun out of the box, gave the gun to her nephew, took the box and put it on a handle of a snow shovel (laughs) put it at the end of the driveway and so when you looked out their front window all you could see was this red rider bb gun sticking out of the snow and so they get up and stuff and she goes hey sweetheart he goes what she goes i think santa missed the house a little bit last night but it's look what's out there for you out in the yard (laughs) this is cruel and unusual anyway he's like woohoo and he runs out there he had a pair of tennis shoes on and some gym shorts and he recorded it and he goes out there and he pulls up this BB gun out of the snow. And there was a handle of a snow shovel sticking out with a note on it saying, as long as you're out there, why don't you shovel your way back in? That was last year. So now this year, he asked her, he goes, baby, what do you want for Christmas? She goes, nothing, because you're just going to mess with me. And uh, so long story short, she finally says, I just want diamonds and pearls. And this, this uh, friend of my son's, he's in construction. So he built this beautiful box. And it says diamonds and pearls, do it yourself kit, and gave it to her for Christmas, opened it up, and it was a lump of coal and an oyster. Yeah. I this is your friend or family? This is my son's friend. This is your son's friend. Yeah. Your son has pretty fing awesome friends. Oh, I thought that was pretty cool. I mean it's a good it's a good Christmas story. Yes. I mean nobody nobody is harmed in the making of this. 
I mean, the last time I sucked things in people's yards, I got in a lot of trouble. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How are those wooden crosses in your yard, Jimmy? <laughs> Don't start with me again. <laughs> uh, anyways, so let's go over a couple questions. One that you boys missed, I believe that you were gone during the holidays. This is Claire that messaged you and says, Hey guys, hope you're doing well. I have a big favor to ask. In the middle of setting up more fish tanks in our spare bedroom and over the last few months, we've been slowly entering the house. I am now up to 15 and very patient and understanding wife. Only three tanks are running now, but I'm getting there slowly. Anyways, I have a blank wall where I would love to have autographed pictures of my favorite fish tube and podcasts. I know it sounds weird request, but I would like this uh, cool items in my room. I don't know how easy it is to send stuff in the U.S. to Scotland, Scotland, but if it's not possible, I totally understand. If it's something you can do, please let us know the cost, Claire. I've attached photos of my progress. So uh, see if I can copy this one and put it in the chat so Adam can see as well. And if you guys are not already on our Discord, go to AquariumGuysPodcast.com or in the show notes. You'll see our link to Discord. Please, please get in there and um, get in there and join the debauchery and listen to these podcasts live. There's the photo, Adam. It is currently uploading as we speak. Jimmy, what do you think of this setup here? I think it's a good start. I tell you what, it's a nice looking room. It's got a nice floor that will slowly be flooded and being warped in about a year. Well, my th- question is, <laughs> just to explain the beginning of the fish room, there's a, you know, a couple nice like metal racks and whatnot, and then you can see like default pictures in the background, and the picture that they're focusing in on is like a picture of, is that... Uh, Hindi picture Hindu? must Looks be like a Buddha. Buddha. I I'm not a theologian by any measure, but I got a feeling that that's what they're trying to do is replace uh, that picture with us in there. So I, I don't know. I mean, you look at the two tanks below there, and those are nice rimless tanks, and and they're yeah. probably they're probably just going for some sort of serenity. 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 Excellent. And so it's you'll see where our picture is going to be is over by the tank full of clown puke. Excellent. That'll be where we're at. Well, in that case, uh, since they're in Scotland, I'm not sending them a picture. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I'm going to send them the digital picture so they can go get it printed on with our Oh, permission. there you go. So uh, I, uh, what do you think, Adam? Well, are we supposed to sign it? I don't think there's enough of us together or pictures. Uh, so I think the best thing we can do is send the infamous picture of Adam in a towel. Uh, <laughs> Adam in a blanket over his head. And then you and I, Jimmy, uh, flipping off the camera, signing uh, sponge filters. Sure. That sounds really... I mean... Who wouldn't want to display that in their home? That's more authentic to the yeah. podcast than anything they could ask for. You know, we probably should send them a couple of pairs of dirty underwear and they could just put that up like a trophy. So if we want to change our minds, we could also take a photo. But, yeah. You know, we Adam, could. Adam's a long ways away. Well, we have that picture of us in uh, from Joe's show last year. Oh, we do. Yeah, but that's that's not really a great, you know, like photo ask photo for a wall in their fish room. Well, maybe. Yeah, we... but it's good. Yeah, that's but... what we got to do. Next time we meet up, we got to take some uh, real, real nice, yeah, quality we should, photos. We should spend some money and, and get get us uh, an appointment, and we the three of us can go, you know, hold hands and take pictures and shit. Glamour shots. Glamour. <laughs> Glamour shots. I like that. Jeez. You know what? I'm gonna put a little bit of of uh, Adam Lambert sprinkled dust on my face. I tell you. Little, little Adam Lambert sprinkled us. I, I just saw Adam Lambert in concert here about a month ago. Phenomenal. He's now singing for Queen, and we had fantastic seats. And I tell you what, Adam Lambert, what a, what a hell of a guy. I feel like you can't but, really go wrong. But he had a lot of that concert. He, he had a lot of glitter, a lot of glitter in his hair. I'm just saying. He pulls it off well. All right. So the next one, before I read a couple more questions here, I'm going to show you what I got for Christmas as no. a little tangent. My friend likes to get me, uh, we do Best Friends Forever little gifts, like retard <laughs> gifts for, for birth birthdays and whatnot but for more importantly for yeah. christmas we like to get each other gag gifts sometimes so she apparently okay. hired an artist and uh we have the rights to this picture so we can do anything we want with it but i will send it into the podcast chat right now for those that are uh, in here adam do you see the podcast chat yeah that is a temporary tattoo and it is about oh i'm gonna say four to six inches we'll go four inches just to be safe you know that, that's nice and to think i was gonna go and spend like three hundred dollars on a tattoo here in the next few weeks and right maybe i can do that now for those that are listening to the podcast because this is not a video podcast and again this is for the live people but i will describe it to you apparently what she did is she said that she wanted a quote fish with tits and when she sent it to the artist and the artist did not know i was an aquarium guy so instead made a large mouth bass with lipstick eyeliner tits in a bikini so and of course they're outrageous tits I am uh, going to take this temporary tattoo and apply it to my ass and then show my mother I got a new tattoo, which is adherently opposed to tattoos. So I'll be sure to, you know, inform you guys how that all went. You know, knowing your mother, 
I'm I'm hoping that she just freaking lets you have it. Yeah, it's a. It's like a, a I buy that for a dollar. I love the chat this evening. You guys are the best. All right, now Jimmy, what? What's your thoughts? It scares the hell out of me a little bit. It looks like some fish just ate her head or something, and and then she's got these bazongas here. Wouldn't you buy that at a Bass Pro Shop on a hat? <laughs> no. No. Okay, no. Adam. Adam, what do you what do you think? No. Just no. 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 Okay. Well. I appreciate I'm, it. I'm not even going to go into a rant about it. <laughs> yeah. no. it's just, I mean, a lot of work went through this and stuff, but yeah. I appreciate yeah. you guys' review. And by the way, your video and audio went all shit. Mine? Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can. It, your audio's better, but your video's still off. I've been trying to tell you, but you ignore me for you. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. He does that to everybody. You should get used to it by now. I uh, know. You're not special. I'm quite the canoe. All right, well, continuing on. Hey, what, what's with a haircut? Mine? Yeah. Okay, so uh, you missed it because I was completely bald, but it's been a while since you've seen me. So I went to California and... Uh, On purpose? Uh, it was a Christmas trip for, oh, that's right. uh, for that's work because right. yep. I, I work out of California office in the, the SoCal area. So I get there and I go to a barber and I got like a free coupon. Like, <laughs> Okay, well, you got your money's worth, absolutely. Anyways, I got a free yeah. coupon. So I'm like, all right, free haircut, I'm in. So I go to this place. I'm the only white dude there and the place is loaded. I, they, get me down on, surprise me. they get me down on the chair. And I'm, I feel so embarrassed because I'm so white. I hear this really good song in the radio. I'm like, is that Tupac? And the whole room, <laughs> I shit you not, the whole room freezes and they go look at me I'm like, yeah, that's Tupac. That's I'm like, Tupac. this is really good. And they're like, oh. Do you have any Bill Cosby? They Can immediately, play that? the whole place burst into laughter and they all heckled me saying, well, I'm finally glad you're expanding your reach outside of bluegrass. So, uh. That set the set the tone. You've got all your teeth, so bluegrass is probably. Yeah. Let's go back to something else. I, I just thought maybe something had happened, and you had like a you got like a make a wish thing going on. Oh no no no, it's worse. So I sat down on the chair, and uh, the the guy the guy said, "So what do you want, man?" I'm like, "You're the artist." I literally said, "You're the artist. You get to pick. This is your canvas. Have fun." You know what? You know what happened? He gave me the Kim Jun Un. I shit you not. Like the, even the little like inside part, the whole thing. <laughs> You know, next time I'm going to say a little easy on the communist look. Please. I like it. So I had to go to my it Christmas so parties yeah. in Kim Jong-un. <laughs> so immediately when I got home, I shaved my head bald. So now I got, I got it like what? This is how long? Eight inches on my beard? Six inches? I, I'd say four, but. <laughs> all right, four inches. All right. It's curled up right now. Whatever. That's what he tells his wife, Jim. I know. Six to eight inches. <laughs> Measurements. So I got a beard. I'm bald. And I'm a big dude. I look like I'm a biker dude that wears neon glasses and shoes. I'm like a clown. Thank you, Jimmy, for pointing that out. I just, I just hadn't seen you for a while. I was on vacation. It's been a hot minute. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot to take in. You know? Yeah, I just, all of a sudden you turn your head to the side and I can see what you're thinking because the hair's so f***ing thin. Holy crap. Holy crap. But I just thought, well, maybe, are you okay? Are you feeling okay? I'm feeling good. Oh, okay, so feeling I, we, don't, we don't need to do a Make-A-Wish program? No, not, not today. Not all today. Right. Next question. Flog. I'm not going to just, uh, I was about to read his last name. I don't do that. So Flog's first name. Also, love the name of Flog. I don't know if that's a nickname or this guy's like from Florida or something. Okay, here's, here's his real name. Hey, my name is Lucas and I'm 19. Okay, never mind then. And I live in Tampa, Florida. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make that joke. Uh, I did not read ahead. Clearly, I should have. Uh, I work at an Amazon f fulfillment center and want to spend my paychecks on some aquarium stuff and really want to start a coral tank. Hopefully, a sell a one day sell corals in the future. Can you guys talk about some growing corals 101? P.S. I prefer episodes without guests, but you guys should definitely do one with a coral expert if you can. <laughs> because you don't know shit. You're right. Uh, love this podcast so much. Really helps me <laughs> through the day and my 12 hour day. A mind numbing job. I love listening to the three of you uh, bullshit. I laugh so hard in my in my AirPods. I look like idiots. It's awesome. The flog or <laughs> Lucas, however you want to. And he emailed back saying, "Feel free to read my message on air." Flog you. Well, I wasn't going to uh, not read it on air. So. Yeah, we don't need your permission. We don't. Well, you send it to us. This is this is our our prerogative now. Flog, yes, for sure. I I would love more uh, more salt episodes, but there are some bigger. Like if you look at the podcast space. There's not a whole lot of aquarium podcasts out there. Uh, there's getting more, but we're definitely one of the bigger names in the game for aquarium podcasts, except for Saltwater. There's a few good Saltwaters. There's the Reef Beef. There's other ones. I'm not saying don't listen to us and check them out, but definitely check them out as well. We'll definitely have more for coral fragging, but we did do one a while back. What episode I'm trying to remember that? the episode number. That was a it long was like time episode ago. was in the 30s. Yeah. 
but that really didn't cover how to frag, what to frag, cheap frags, stuff like that. So it's on the list, a, a long, long list of <laughs> recommendations. Now for the topic at hand, I had it saved. Can I, can I go on my rant first? Yes. Ad, Adam, please kick in your rant. Oh, hold on. I gotta, I gotta sit back for this. Okay. Wait, wait. I'll freshen up your drink. All right. Pause, pause the podcast. Come back with a drink. All right. I'm ready. All right. Aquion, get your fucking shit together. Hold on. Oh, hold whoa, on. whoa. What the hell? Hold on. We're, it's already hard enough for us to get sponsors because we're a brand <laughs> risk. Now you just gotta fucking just shit on the, one of the biggest boys in the in the neighborhood. The fuck wow. they do? Did, did they take a dump on your lawn? Who fucking drowned your dog over Christmas? My God. Slow Somebody. down. Somebody. Slow down. Here, here's what happened. I go looking. Okay. Aquion fish food is fine. Yeah, if you want fucking garbage to feed your fish, <laughs> go ahead and feed them garbage. Oh, God. Okay. We, guys, I'm going to stop you there, Adam. Just one second. <laughs> um, guys, guys, if you don't understand how hard it is for us to get sponsors on this shit, uh, please go to Patreon. <laughs> Help us out. Throw us a buck because no one else is going to give us you know, any what we money really for need, this. We, we, don't, we don't need any money in Patreon. We need some money for Adam to get some help. Yes. He's got some freaking issues then, with anger. Right, Adam, Adam, let's go, let's go with this interview. Adam, the corridors are fine. Hold on. Hold yeah. on. Hold on. Don't argue with our fans. All right. Give them, give them time. <laughs> Give him time to cook. God, right? I just, I just want to, Adam. You're on the edge. Just, yeah, don't, don't, no, just Adam, jump, wh- jump, why? jump, Adam. What happened? Tell us the story, Adam. Okay. What happened? Why? So went, calm down. I because I, I, I am calm. I went to go buy mm. some fucking beta pellets because I wanted some good quality beta pellets. So I go to Petco because that's the closest. That's the only thing that I got in my area. Oh, Amazon um, doesn't I come to your house. I don't want a fucking order from Amazon, but that's, that's another story. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Sorry. So. Yeah, Hikari, be- H- Hikari is the best for beta pellets. I go everywhere looking for f***ing Hikari beta pellets. Can't find them f***ing anywhere. So then there, then I go and I talk to this PetSmart guy. And he goes, here, these are your two choices. And he gives me an Aquion and then some other f***ing off-brand that I've never even heard of before. And I go, well, I'll go with Aquion. And the packaging looks like the beta pellets are small, right? The f***ing beta pellets are bigger than the goddamn beta's eyeballs. <laughs> Adam, Adam, have you not heard of giant betas? Come on. No! Th- I, uh, this is asinine stupidity. Have some f***ing quality control for your shit and make a good quality food. Oh my God. I had to run the, thing, the shit through a f***ing grinder just to get it to work. And, and why do you have a grinder in the house, Adam? And I think you should use no, a grinder more often. A <laughs> I think you need to use a grinder more often. You're 10. Yeah, but all I'm saying is... That they go and they, they're like, oh, here, try this shit. Everything that I bought from Aquion has been f***ing garbage. They have literally taken fish keeping and flushed it down the toilet. It's worse than the shit that they gave you at Walmart. Oh. You know, I think who you should be mad at is Hikari. Because why isn't Hikari out there pushing their stuff in these big box stores? You should be mad at Hikari, right. not Aquion. Like, Zoomed pellets are better. Hikari pellets. Oh. I could name off like four fucking other pellet companies. Can I go? That are than Aquion. Can I go and take your hate and then go with a little love? I love Zoomed shit. Zoomed shit. Zoom- the problem with Zoomed, I, I love that's it. not what I'm complaining they about. They got these little scoops Zoomed with their beta awesome. containers. It's really cute. And you give your kid a little scooper. And then, and anyways, continue. But, but like, Aquion is just taking stuff and then like making it in the shitter. Yeah. And then they're like, hey, this is all you can get. And then when your beta dies of starvation because the f***ing pellets are too big, they're going to be like, oh, you should buy another beta. Why would I pay $20 for a f***ing beta? That's what they are, by the way, at Petco now is $20. I did see that. For a three beta. For a normal beta. Really sh- yeah, for a normal beta. How much is a normal beta, Jim? 80 cents? A dollar? The last they time they're on sale, beta. I picked them up for 9 cents a piece for 100 lot. Exactly. And so your beta is going to starve to death because they, all they have is fucking shitty ass Aquion food. They're going to, it's too big for them. Why don't you feed them flake? And you're to spend another $20. Why don't you feed them flake? I have never seen a beta eat flake and I will not yell about that one. Have all you right. gotten your beta to eat flake? I don't feed uh, them. I have actually. I've gotten my beta <laughs> to eat flake. Enough. I mean, I'd eat flake like, if I was hungry enough. But it's like, just give me fucking good products. All like, right. That's all I want. I just want shit that doesn't, that doesn't kill my fish, or isn't garbage, and I don't want f***ing idiots at Petco or PetSmart telling me that they f***ing know better than me. Don't you have, like, a regular pet store around there somewhere? 
No, they went. They closed. The guy retired. All right. So now we have to drive to the cities. You're gonna have to go on was, on, on the internet by yourself. So. Now we're gonna have to go through the questions yeah. because uh, you know you, you've you've now arose the uh, the haters and lovers in the chat. So someone said Aquaman food's fine. Shut the f*** up, my quarries are fine. Uh, my quarry betas are good. Adam and the pig... Or is he shit? Oh, hold on. They have, this, they have this picture here of Adam. It's a picture of Peter Griffin fighting the chicken and family guy. And it says, look at this is a video of the Petco clerk and Adam fighting over betas. It's, <laughs> so, that was decent. Can't fix stupid. I, like uh, I agree, Aquion's pretty bad. Uh, Adam should write an angry letter to Aquion and get more free beta pellets. Um, there we go. Got him for free. I wouldn't use it. Uh, there's, there, there's a post. Extreme is superior. Now, okay, I'm gonna unpause you. Everybody has their their own pros and cons. Every company has had a bad batch of food. I don't care who it is. You check your food before you do it. If they're mass manufacturing something, you're not, not in 100% of the containers are not going to be good, right? It's just how food is. But if you talk to different people, everybody has their favorite food. I, you know, do like some Akari stuff, but I, I still like to have flake. Akari doesn't do much for flake. Uh, extreme, I haven't had anything bad. I have my fif uh, favorites like Norfin, I love. Love that shit. New Life Spectrum, awesome stuff. But you talk to anybody, oh, yeah. and I don't think Chris Biggs will admit it, but if you talk to Chris Biggs about his uh, least favorite food company, he is one of the most hu humorous people to have an Adam style rant about fish food, uh, a particular kind of popular company that I'm not going to name, but have some fun, you know, let us know in your notes. If you want to just do your own Adam rant and uh, su submit it, Aquarium guys, podcast at gmail.com. Now the last quick one is I got a message here. Someone says, someone, uh, can you get me Adam's address so I can send him some better food? <laughs> so Adam, this is your opportunity to tell people your address on the podcast. Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> How about your phone number? Don't you have a P.O. box? How about your last nine <laughs> of your social security number? The last nine of your social security number. Can you set up a P.O. box so we can all send you shit? That'd be fun for me. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I could poop in a bucket and mail Hey, it. most time they don't ask for permission, so consider that a, a nice... <laughs> just Google at, just Google Adam and uh, just you'll find his address. Uh, Adam, Ooh, was it state penitentiary? Adam, did you go back no. to Petco and complain about your food? You should. No, I didn't bother. Although, just so you know, now apparently I must have figured something with Petco because... You're banned? Um, You're banned again? No. Oh, okay. Whenever I, whenever I go in there for whatever reason, like to buy crickets or something, they, they sent me like 14 emails asking me how was my visit and everything. Well, yeah, because you f***ing hazed the guy doing his job. Yeah, what was he, 11? He, I'm shitty. He was 11 he years old, Adam. He was f***ing older than that. Sorry, he didn't know that you're a pissy Aquarius, all right? That's wow. that's on that's on him. I, I can't wait till Adam's 70 years old and he's going to be, get the hell off my lawn, even though he doesn't have a lawn. I am buying so much Aquion food. Oh. We're, uh, I, you know what we should do? For his birthday. We should give him our address and have people send us Aquion food and then we'll forward it to Adam. <laughs> that's okay. what we should do. Real talk, though. Real talk. Uh, we do have an address if you guys do want to send something to Adam. We're not going to give his actual address out, but we... Because uh, he's still under the witness protection program also. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah. Surveillance by the, by the federal government. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, for those that want to know, uh, we do accept packages at 223 Front Street West, Detroit Lakes, Minnesota, 56501. That is the designated spot for fan mail and retarded packages. Yeah. And if your package is ticking, we're going to soak it in water first before we open it. And if you send us clown puke, know that we love you, your core. Um, yeah. Please spend money sending gravel in the mail. I'd love that. All right. Who, now, who said that? Who thinks that a f***ing beta needs 10 gallons? Oh, okay. Quick rant. Oh, here we go. Here, uh, hold yeah, on. No, Adam, you had, to, you had to ask that question. So at D's Fish Co., they're putting up a giant cylindrical tank. You remember that tank at Ty's place? Mm hmm I've seen it. How many gallons is that? Like a hundred and something? It's got to be somewhere north of 80. Yeah. Oh, well, then it's a giant sump underneath. So I think like all in all, it's like 125 gallons, but it's a giant cylinder tube going straight up. And the guys got it, uh, finally got all the hardware to put it together. They got it set in the store and they're getting it uh, uh, cycled. They already decided that they're putting one beta. One beta. One, one in that <laughs> <laughs> tank. Just put one in it. And they're, and they're going to put a sign on it saying, uh, still not enough from one data <laughs> one better yeah and I, I hope i hope they put the uh, the pump on high so it's swirling around like a blender 
<laughs> just a turbine. Just a turbine and chewing up this beta. Can you imagine? Because that, that thing stands up. It's got to be five, what, four and a half, five feet tall. Well, it touches the ceiling almost. Well, yeah, it's but it's, it's on a base. Yeah. So can you imagine? Like, betas go all the way to the bottom. They sit and lay down. And then that whole thing has got to go five feet in the air to get a gulp of air before it drops back down half dead and exhausted. You're an awful person. Apparently. Oh, thank you. That Adam, that, that hit the spot. You know, normally I have well, to cringe. But you got enjoyed. If we're never going to so. get sponsored by Aquion, at least you, you made it interesting. I have no problem I'd... with them if they want to make some actual good f***ing products. All right. I would, be, I would be okay with, you know what? I think that I'm going to just buy random shit every time I go to Petco, PetSmart. I'm going to try it, and then I'm going to be like, this is Adam's opinion on this. That, that's what we'll do. Every episode, yeah, every episode, every episode, we're going to have you be a professional reviewer. We should do that. We should do like, like a little three-minute segment. Yes, uh, and you're going to tell us the product, how you felt about it, and you're going to give it an Adam score, you know, one out of five. So right well, now I'm we did so Aquion sure Beta Pellets. That. That's a zero out of five. That, that's a zero out of five, yeah. My what, personal favorite is uh, the lighting systems that cost like $250. Why? I'm not buying that. Like, who buys those? It's up to you. This is this is free form jazz, Adam. We don't get to pick the product. You get to pick the product. Okay, but but like, I'm I'm asking a serious question. Is that an actual thing people use? Is yes. Two hundred fifty dollars. Oh God, yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. I know people that spend five hundred bucks on their not salt water lights. It's unbelievable what people will spend. I mean, I look at some stuff. I go, that's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. And you go, yeah, they sold 600,000 of them last There you go. There you go. Pop in. Tropical Man says, my lights for my plants are $400. So, yes, there you go. He, what, what kind of plants? plants? What kind of plants do you got? Oh, uh, they're fresh, freshwater plants. Oh. Oh, they're under the, under the water plants. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was something else. Oh. Oh. I thought maybe he was starting to farm or something. Cheech and Chong, baby. There we go. All right. So, now like, let's get to our, our thing. Adam, one more note. No, no, no. I'll, I'll stop. Are you sure? Because that soapbox okay. is pretty warm. You know what would yeah. be fun? No, no, no. I'm fine. You know what would be fun for us? When, when Adam does these things, it would be fine if we had a blood pressure cuff on him and we could just have a meter and just watch his blood pressure. And then I'll take bets on when he dies, has a heart attack. Love of God, editor, please make that sound softer. Replace it with the sound. Oh. No, I'm, I'm cranking it up. That's as, right. As a reminder from the legal department, though, the, the personal views of Adam Elnishar do not represent the views or opinions of the Aquarium Guys podcast. Just throwing that out Could there. you put that on the ad? Can you put that on a t-shirt? Put I'm that on a t-shirt. Two. Number two, uh, number two, his segment where he reviews things should be called the Pissy Aquarist. You said it. <laughs> Done. I'm claiming it. <laughs> Done. I'm calling it the Pissy Aquarist. Done. And number How three, his... How am I pissy? Because you're... Because you're pissy. And number three, <laughs> his scale should really only be zero to two. <laughs> either he loves it or he hates it. There's no one to five. Okay. Bullshit. Yeah. It's, it's right, green or red. There you go. I love it. There you go, Adam. Make it even easier on you, buddy. All you need to do is make it work. That's like, okay, having shitty aquarium food and $500 f- lights is like putting fake testicles in your dog when you neuter them. Whoa. The guy, the guy that makes it, the guy that makes those. Do you know how much he makes a year? He makes between five and ten million dollars a year selling fake dog testicles. Wait, what? and who's a dumbass? And those dogs have never felt better. You know what? I'm gonna stop it there. I'm gonna stop it there. We've had too much. Thank you, Adam. Uh, save that for next round. Oh, Lord in heaven. Um, right. let's go back to the uh, the real reason we're doing this podcast today. <laughs> it's for money. In the Discord, we have a place we're called Ask for Help, and we can review some of these if we have extra time. But the the main part of the podcast I need to do is Sam the Man, one of our uh, added fans here, says, Hi, everyone. I want to salt my guppy tank. Will this work? If so, how much per gallon? The tank is bare and a thin layer of crushed coral on the bottom. So immediately, I take the opportunity to grab Aquarium Co-op's link, Aquarium Salt for Sick Fish. So you stole it from somebody else. uh, uh, If someone did other content well, absolutely, I'll share it. I can't recreate the wheel better than what's posted here. And the Aquarium Co-op did a good job of this post. So they show in this particular post, and I'm going to open this for us to, to read along. And again, this is AquariumCoop.com on their blog. Check it out. They did a, de- a damn decent job. So they go into details of how it works, uh, how you should use the salt, and they go to treatment. So level one that they recommend is one teaspoon per three gallons of water. And this is poured directly. Hold on here. We've kept thousands of fish in our store, and this is level safe for virtually all fish except for anchor catfish. 
Keep the salt in solution for four to five days and then increase concentration if there's no improvement. So that's level one. Level two, one teaspoon for two gallons and it keeps going up. Not better than give them the beans. The beans is one teaspoon per one gallon. And remember that salt does not evaporate out or get filtered out. The only way to remove salt is by changing the water. When you put salt in, as much as we've been a podcast that tells everybody with a sick fish, salt it first and then come ask us later, it does not get removed from the tank. You have to do that. But I posted that in there, and he was nice enough to uh, message back more detail. Says, I've heard success with keeping guppies long-term with a bit of salt. Do you recommend this? And I said, absolutely, salt it up, bay. Guppies are one of the species that you can have in all the way saltwater aquarium. You can put guppies in if you want to acclimate them slowly and keep building them up and up and up for the tolerance. You can acclimate them all the way up to be right with your uh, clownfish in your saltwater tank, your Ocellaris clowns, whatever else. So having some salt in the water at all times for guppies, fantastic. I just saw people who love guppies have, have gone out there and seen these beautiful, beautiful guppy strains they've come up with that are coming from overseas, from Thailand, different places. I just came upon a really nice article talking about that these things are kept in salt 24 seven and different countries at different salt ratios. And somebody had found out what they were and they posted them. And there was anywhere between one to three teaspoons of salt per gallon for most of these fish. And, and from certain vendors, you need to keep it a much higher salinity. And then you have to bring it back down once you get them to your place. But they've been held at such a high salinity. That's where they breed. Jimmy, you are the segue capital of the day because that is what I want to do the podcast about. So he keeps on going to saying, I'm trying to get a line going using Jimmy's method of getting adults, breeding them. And then when the adults die, raiding out the fry. And on Gen 3 of doing this and seeing the success. But the water here is almost RO, so acclimating them to water is a nightmare. Even with crushed coral, my new idea is to get some bulletproof guppies and add adding salt and crossing them with endlers. <laughs> to get nice bulletproof hybrids, possibly to use as feeder fish for my fish room and the picky eaters. Sorry for the wall of text. So I've had this style question ever since that you've mentioned what you've been doing in your fish room. And I've had other people beg for you to do a section of the podcast where you're just talking about your guppy breeding and all of your research and study through the years. Because we started this podcast, episode one, Jimmy talking about burning up 8K and guppies. So after all these years, Jimmy, can, can you give us a breakdown of what you've been doing, things you found, and what you recommend? Well, like everybody else, I come in going circles. When I say that I'm in love with guppies this month, next month might be angelfish. But what really brought me back to guppies is all these beautiful, beautiful different varieties that you see. And if you go on Aquabid, there's a company out of Thailand, I believe, that shows you all the new ones that are over there. And they're $40 a trio. Plus, you have to pay all these transshipping fees and whatnot. And their reviews are pretty poor for getting them over here alive. But back in the day here, about two years ago, Secrets Farms was good enough to get me some crown tail guppies, which are my favorite. And that's the ones I've been working with for the last year or so. And crown tail guppies are called crown tail guppies in this country, but they're called other things in other countries. So if you're looking for them on a list, I've, I've uh, now have uh, Julie, who was previously with uh, Seagrass Farms, and now she's now working with another uh, fish farmer. They've been looking for crown tail guppies from these other places too, and, and they can't even find anything. But they finally took some pictures of, I sent pictures of my fish to them. They sent pictures, they went, oh, they're called this. And you would never know by looking at the list of what they were called. It's just like discus. What do they call them? Huh? It's completely crazy. What the hell was it called? Well, it's just like Celestial Pearl Danos. They're also called Galaxy Rasboras. I mean, they're yeah. plants. Uh, plants have different names as well. I mean, it's, it's just a pain in the ass. There's no... You know, regulating body saying what we need to call things so people can have an equal scale. It's some guy marketing trying to uh, pretend that he has something different and cut it a different way. Yeah, there. I mean, I think some of them were called reticulated uh, tail and different things and stuff. But I mean, I only know what I know from what I, you know, what I've bought them from. I've I've been uh, doing a little bit of this on my side as well, and I've seen at least three different names for that right. same crown tail gu guppy. Can I remember uh, some of them? No. Yeah, if you go on Aquabid right now. There's two or three different flavors in Aquabid that, that are listed, and they're listed as crown tail. But there again, you look at the price, and it's going to last you about $75 to $100 to land these things and, and hope to God they're alive, which they're not going to be if they're going to send them from Thailand in three uh, things. But. So I'm going to interview you. That's what we're going to do here, because I'm, I'm trying to whack 
30 questions out of our audience uh, with this bit. So number one, when you import something and you find a guppy that you want, what's the process? You find a dude on Aquabid, wherever you find it, what does Jimmy do to prepare and what do you got to do to make sure that strain continues on in your fish room? The, the first thing I do when I, when I find something that I really want, I try to verify that's what I'm going to get. Because I cannot tell you when you're paying $100, Hundred and fifty for a bag of fish, and when I'm talking, when I buy guppies, I'm buying you know eighty to a hundred. So I want to make sure I get exactly what I want. I ordered some uh, full oil bino reds one day, and they came in, and they were they were full reds, but they weren't albino. But yet I paid the albino price. So I'm very interested to know exactly what I'm going to get. And if I can ask somebody, I'd like to wait until whoever has brought them in has got them sitting there, so I, they can send me pictures. But when I'm ordering from people like uh, Dolphin or Z Fish or Aquanautics, which is a wholesale company out in California, they're called completely different things. And so that gets to be really tough to try to find what you're looking for. I mean, Joe from Joe Shrimp Shack helped me figure out when we're trying to find the different shrimp and they call them completely different things than we do. Well, there's places out there, I won't use names, but these big wholesalers, the big boy wholesalers where you have to get, you know, a half a box as a minimum order for one skew. These have country listings. So from Sri Lanka, there's 67 people that sell the same type of fish. So not only do you have to figure out the same type of fish, but then each person can name things differently. So you get skew numbers. So when you talk to your friends and when you're inside the game of a fish store and whatnot, you're like, hey, I know you ordered that from so-and-so, but there's literally 300 options. Which skew did you have for the yellow shrimp? Right. Neocardinia shrimp. Oh, this is the skew you need to use, and they give you the coat. That's literally what you have to live off of. You have to learn from somebody some else. Yeah, you got to hope that you, you get some support there. I mean, it's like when you look for discus on these overseas lists. I mean, a white pigeon blood might be called something else, might be called something else, might be called something else, and then you'll look on the internet and you'll see four more names for them. So it's whatever somebody wants to call something is what you're you're paying for. So you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder for what you want and. What I was looking for when I got the crown tails is I wanted something different than nobody had. And I wanted to work with them because I can demand a higher price. But here's the problem is that you import 80, you might get 25 that live longer than six months. Right. And so now you've got to try to get them. I bring them in and I know they're coming from a country with high salinity. So I bring them in with high salinity. And as I do water changes, I just slowly try to get them back down to my water. Cause I don't want to mix, mix uh, salts or chemicals every damn time i do a water change yeah we we know better to try to get a fish acclimated with ph buffers is just going to be a band-aid to the solution it just rebounds so quickly so once you finally get them back down to where you're comfortable with the water parameters that, and they're doing well and the one thing that i find out that that helps me quite a bit when i bring in if i've got brine shrimp hatched they'll normally go after the brine shrimp and here's the thing is they're in such high concentrations of salt the brine shrimp last a very long time. I mean, they'll, they'll live 24 hours in there and these fish will go after them because they're, they're being used to being fed a lot of live food. And so, first of all, you got to get them to come in. You got to get them to settle down. Uh, hopefully, they don't pick up any fungus or any oddball stuff. Get them acclimated to the water. And now you got to get them to eat. And once you got them, you get them to eat, then you got to be patient to get them to breed. And so, there, you finally get them to breed and you get, like on the crown tails, they only have maybe eight to 15 little ones. They don't produce a lot of, a lot of babies. So in my tanks, I try to keep a lot of duckweed. I've tried many times to pull the females out and put them in those little boxes. It seems to stress them out and kill them. It seems to uh, make them abort the babies and stuff. So like Rob, I have very few uh, luck unless they're just about to pop. Right. They don't have really control over it. But even then, like you could take a, I've seen it where people, a guppy was mid birth. You try to scoop it, put it in the box. It will hold the rest of the birth until it's stillbirth and kill the uh, kill fry. Yeah. So the I've, box. I've I'm, had that happen too. Yeah. The box, unless you're using it up front and they're keeping in there long term and you're trying to, how do I say, cool them off or at least stabilize them so they're not as stressed out in the box. The box does not have a large amount of success. It's for the mom and pop hobbyists that want to teach their kid that babies can come out of a fish and they can see one or two come out, but it's not getting actual numbers from a batch. That's not how you farm a fish. Right. If you keep your adults fed very well and four times a day isn't quite enough. I mean, we look, look at some of these guys. Uh, the guys from Aquarium Co-op did a great thing on what country was it at, uh, where they went over to the, uh, the big guppy production place out in the desert. Remember that? You watch that? There was a, a few different ones. There were definitely in arid countries. 
Uh, I don't. I, one wasn't Syria. Where was it? So I think it was somewhere in India. Uh, I don't know. It was somewhere overseas, and it blew our mind. It was the biggest uh, guppy uh, farm that I've ever seen in my life. Yep, yeah, and they and they feed their their guppies ten, twelve times a day. They have automatic feeders that go over these big tubs and stuff. So once you get your 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 fish to eat and you keep them well fed, if you have enough duckweed in there, the babies will tend to be able to hide good enough. So once I see that I've got, I have a ten gallon tank full of the duckweed, and and you'll see with a flashlight if you you take the flashlight and you shine it up in the duckweed, you'll see little eyes that kind of reflect. They don't, I want to say glow, but they reflect. And if you look very carefully up there, you can see there's 10, maybe 12 little ones up there. Rather than try to catch the god dang little ones, I then grab the female and the male and I put them to the next tank. And so I might have 10 tanks for one kind of fish. And so you can just keep moving them over. It's easier to move the parents than it is to try to catch the babies. And once you have the babies in the tank and the parents aren't in there, then they'll come out the next couple of days. You'll see that there's three or four down there and all of a sudden there's 10 and all of a sudden you'll see there's 15 of them down there and they love to eat the baby brine shrimp. I use bare bottom tanks, which I like. I know you're a big sand fan, but um, with the baby brine shrimp, the baby brine shrimp for some reason will sit on the bottom and bounce off the bottom of the tank. And that's where the fish will usually go down and chase them down, especially the little one. And uh, I always overfeed. That's my biggest problem. I do two gallons of uh, brine shrimp morning and evening. And that's what I feed uh, to my guppies. The minute I quit feeding and try to go to like a pellet or a flake, unless they're adults, they'll kind of quit growing. I, yeah, they stunt out. They kind of stunt out after mm -hmm. that. So my whole thing is is that uh, I try to keep them on brine shrimp until I'm ready to sell them. And I, and then, but I'm introducing other stuff slowly but surely. So when somebody else gets them, that they'll eat that stuff. But I'm a, a big uh, brine shrimp guy. You can go on brine shrimp direct, get yourself a can for 35, 40 bucks, and that will feed a lot of fish for, for a long, a long, long time. Long time. Yep. Now, the other details that I like to, to point out, you said like the bottom of the sand, they bounce off the bottom and catch. Absolutely. Do that with your, your baby tanks. I'm not a sand guy for, uh, for baby tanks. You can do it, but uh, I'm more of the person that uses sand if you want a seasoned tank. So if you want to use big grow out tanks, like I have a 55 gallon. Uh, that I have at uh, clear bottom. I'm only doing clear bottom because the, the cichlids in there and I'm trying to encourage them to breed in pots. If I didn't have the cichlids in there, it would be a sand bottom and I would try to season out the tank and then do that complimentary mix of live food and, uh, f and crush uh, powdered food for the live bears because they're not getting their primary source of food off of me. They're getting supplementary food off of me. A seasoned tank provides a lot of bionutrients, copepods, a lot of other things. So if you're not doing brine shrimp, that's the, uh, the only other way to go. But still, there's a cap to that. You can't just sit there and control your copepods and microorganisms in your tank. You have to just have multiple tanks that are seasoned. Once they've essentially mowed down the herd, you either move them or then you have to go switch right back to something live. So the Daphnia, if they're bigger, brine shrimp is always the go-to. You can't, can't get away from it. Yeah, I, I personally just love brine shrimp and... Over the years, I, I've, I've gotten a better way to, to grow it for myself. It works very well for me. It doesn't work for everybody else. I have a 10-gallon tank with three gallons uh, glass jars in the tank. I have one heater in the tank, six inches of water. I put an airline tube in each jar. But the whole trick to keeping your airlines clear when you've got those on it is you take one of the hard stems that you see for underground filters that sit on the inside. And so you take your hose and you put a, a five or six-inch piece of stem on there. And at the end of the stem, you still want to add another three or four inches of just regular silicone hose. Because what happens if you have just a stem or, or a regular uh, hose in there, within 24 to 36 hours, it will get full of salt and quit, and quit producing current, and then your brine shrimp die. Right. And so, I mean, I know people that use uh, air stones, which work fine, but, I mean, that fine mist brings a lot of the eggs to the top, and then they end up on the side of the jar, and they don't hatch and stuff. So that's just something that works for me is to have the 10 gallon tank, one heater, three jars. And then um, when I pull out the, the jar that I'm going to feed, I rotate down. So it's just kind of a conveyor belt type system. And if you've raised brine shrimp long enough, you can just look at the jar and go, oh, it's ready to go. Or I'm going to let this go another few hours. I've had the same brine shrimp that I've set up a hatch within um, six hours of each other. But they, you know, I put them together at the same time. They should have hatched at the same time. But because one probably had a little more salinity in it, it hatched faster or it hatched slower. So sure. You just have to be able to watch and know when it's time for these uh, fish to be fed. Then I drain the one gallon 
worth of brain shrimp into a huge brain shrimp net, which I got from up in uh, in Tampa, Florida, from the uh, Florida Fish Co-op. And my brine shrimp net is 10 inches. And it's a hard wire brine shrimp net. I think I paid like 35, 40 bucks for it. I've got a couple of them. And I'll drain the whole gallon of that. And then what I do is I put a one eight ounce jar of water and I put the brine shrimp into that. And then I use the eyedropper that I got from Amazon, Adam, which is on the internet. And uh, <laughs> then you can really measure out well how much you want to give them with the big giant eyedropper. So my eyedropper is probably about eight inches long, really eight inches long. Excellent. And, not 10. And anyway, you know, when I, I feed, I feed this tank that's just full of babies, you know, I'll, I'll shoot the whole thing in there. If I've got just a pair of fish or, you know, a pair of uh, males or a bunch of extra females, I, you can kind of just gather how much you can give them. And um, you can actually shoot it right down. So like with the uh, tank, with the babies, a lot of times the babies will hang out way in the back because they're kind of shy at first. And then you can shoot that with the air, with the uh, eyedropper right in front of them. And with an air gun, with an air shoot gun, it right in. Shoot it right up their nose, yeah. But my whole, my whole thing with, with guppies is, is I love just to be able to keep running the conveyor belt. And Steve Rubicki, who's been on this podcast the one time, was, was talking about how he'd rather sell a pair of fish for $250 rather than sell 250 little fish for a dollar piece. It's a lot less work, um, a lot less tanks. And um, anyway, so with the high-end guppies, when you can gather that you can get 40 to $45 for a trio or a pair, uh, to me, it's well worth just having 15 little ones at a crack. And then you can still call, you're still going to have a couple of bad ones. But even if you get a, a couple of females that, that just don't look perfect in your eyes, I mean, they, may, they still may throw fantastic babies. So, I mean, I still keep the extra females on these high-end stuff and see what they turn out to. Now, I want to go a little bit more over the kamikaze. That's what we get a lot of questions with, the kamikaze method. And when I say this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to describe it. Correct me if I'm wrong. You'll find a guppy, you'll import it in, and no matter what you do, they're notorious, like, no matter the, the acclimation, the prep, they just shit out. Mm -hmm. There's just nothing you can do. Maybe you didn't know the magic recipe that this came from, maybe they're a real weak line, but what you've uh, had luck doing, and that you brought to light, and people had more questions on, is you get them in, you keep them long enough to drop a batch, mm -hmm. and then the batches are solid and acclimated afterwards. And you mentioned, like what I was mentioning in the comments, about Generation 3s when they're good enough to go. Right. You know, even with the F1s, you know, you get your first batch, if they have 15 little ones, as long as you can keep them from being cannibalized, you'll raise 15 because they're that solid. But to bring in 80 to 100 fish and end up with 25, and you can't figure out what you did right for these 25, I've never had them, the imports last longer than maybe... Nine months. Well, one of your crazy strains, and this is uh, from me watching and listening to your bitching. Uh, the importer told you don't get these; they're going to crap out. And it was the coolest looking uh, beta. It was the uh, you call crown tails. These are, look like their their fins are pre shredded. I put a uh, picture in chat so people mm -hmm. can get to see them. And it was a particular strain of crown tails that you've never seen before. And you said I'm going to risk it for the biscuit. You got it in. I think you got like a hundred in. Zero survived. Right. Yeah, it was and the, you got lucky with one of them dropping a batch, and now you're you're keeping the line going for a good long while. Yeah, they came in, and they're probably twenty percent were dead in the bag. Um, slowly acclimated them, and watched three to five die every day, like clockwork, no matter what we did. And finally, until that, they're all gone. Yeah, finally there was one female that had some some babies and stuff. So you know, you, you go, well, here's my one fish that cost me one hundred and twenty five dollars. And it's just ridiculous. I mean, and we know you're lying because you spent more than that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some of these, some of these fish, they're I'm like, we give Adam crap about uh, those endler fish, but I'm seeing them now where they're packed 500 and they're $2 a fish. So you're talking a thousand dollars a bag mm -hmm. for endlers. You know, there's no way I'm doing that much crack. Now to address this guy's qu uh, question earlier, this is his thought uh, to comment on it is he wanted to hearty up a line of guppies that he liked so he wanted to get some guppies with some, some fancy details and then get some what he would consider sturdy endlers across them. So he would have a guppy that he enjoys mm -hmm. and that he could, again, just use for uh, fish food as needed if it uh, overpopulates in this tank. Right. So I am adamant against that mentality. If you're going to do that, stop crossing endlers. I mean, there's too many hybrid species, in, especially in the guppy world, that we can't keep endlers pure. And I know that we are the feeder guppy people that make fun of these things, but 
to be all of honesty, to keep these going, some of the, which that are extinct in the wild or soon to be extinct, the only way we're going to preserve these for our kids is going to be in a tank. So if you're going to have a guppy and you want to cross a guppy, fine. But if you have a guppy you want to cross with an endler, stop it. That's just a bad habit that we need to discourage just about everybody from doing, in my opinion. Yeah. If you're you were saying, Adam? Um, I just had a question. I was wondering, are endlers, like, not hardy anymore? Uh, know? They, uh, a lot of people think that uh, endlers, as a, uh, the common endlers, uh, are hardier than guppies. That is the uh, thought and what he was trying to note is that he picks his colors from the guppy. He's going to cross it with a hardy, ugly endler, and he's going to have something that at least he knows he can trust. I didn't think uh, it's called getting shitty strains of guppy. You know, if he's just looking for, to have extra guppies to feed his fish, I mean, I can pick up a box of a thousand feeder guppies for 30 bucks plus shipping. I mean, you could talk to your local wholesaler and say, can you get me a box of feeder guppies? And you're, you're going to ex get exactly that. But I have gotten boxes of feeder sword tails, not exaggerating. And they came in and they were freaking gorgeous. And I went through there and I pulled out about 200 of them that were, you know, marigolds, uh, red bricks and stuff. And I sold them for a premium and paid $30. And then, of course, I thought, I'm going to do this again. The next time I ordered them came in and they were, they were all little tiny green ones and little red ones. I mean, they weren't big enough to even sell. Um, so when I... We would request these from my wholesaler. I would say, "Hey, I want the big ones again. Can you, you know, if you can't get me big ones, don't send them to me." And I made a lot of money bringing in a box of sword tails for thirty bucks. And there's two hundred and fifty to five hundred. All they do is they just scoop, and once one scoop is, you know, and they're all different sizes, so you have to kind of sort through them. But that's a hell of a lot of fun if you're looking for something just to go in there, grab something very cheap, and then turn it into something beautiful. I mean, a lot of these things are already gorgeous. Ta-da. Hey, oh, Jim, remember that conversation we had? In the bathroom? Earlier? No, earlier about my uh, pygmy sword tail. Yes, you should ask that question right now. Yeah, so I bought a pair of pygmy sword tails from Fernando at that last fish show we were at, Ross. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that was a good fish show, by the way. There was a lot of cool shit there. Yeah, there People was. should go to those small shows. Um, the Galaxy Daniels and then the Scarlet Baddest were just phenomenal. Um, that that one guy was that one table was selling but anyways so i bought those i bought them i had a pair and that was the last pair that fernando had and um all my live bears are dying off i can't figure out why but you mixed them up with like, your with live bears with your son little tiny pygmy sunfish right well there's one in there yeah mm -hmm. but then i put the scarlet baddest in there and then the galaxy rasboras i've kind of mixed everybody they're all in one 10 gallon tank but my question was oh, that's like, a I hell of a 10 this. Oh, it's, I change 50% of the water every week, and there's a shit ton of cherry shrimp and uh, red really shrimp in there. I want a picture and of this just, shit. <laughs> I want a picture of this shit. Well, it's got, it's full of the plants, so that won't, I mean, nothing will, nothing will get killed in that tank. But it's huh. like. But, but, um, but yet your fish are dead. What happened? No, here's my thing. The fish that should die, like the scarlet baddest, because those are touchy. The shrimp should die. You know, the galaxy Daniels. Those, I expect those to die. And those things are just bulletproof. But my damn pygmy sword tails and even some female guppies are just keeled over. It makes no sense to me. Has anybody got any ideas Jim's out there? Well, Jim's number one, like he knows. Adam uh, doesn't, uh, didn't use his quarantine process. So, uh, <laughs> I knew that was coming. Adam gets what he gets, you know what I'm saying? But, I mean, there you go. You're looking at some, you said you had, had little mini swords or something. What did you say you had? Pygmy sword pygmy, tails. Pygmy swords. Which are probably a little more delicate than a regular sword tail. I don't know. Man, just, just on that same tangent, I got some stuff from Fernando, or that same uh, meeting from Fernando. I got some, Fernando. I got some stuff from Dee's Fish Co. I got, I got stuff here and there that I've been adding to my 125. And my 125 is just the, the biggest uh, gaggle of different things. Just a slew of shit. So what I do is I, I do the quarantine process. I put them in the tank for two to four weeks, depending on, uh, you know, how long the, the where they came from, all the other information. I'll go through the quarantine steps, but then I still add them to my tank uh, afterwards. And even after the quarantine process, I still can get unlucky. What happened to me recently is now Jimmy says that I'm, I'm rolling some mad dice. He knows that I have six zebra placos in there that are just getting to uh, close to breeding size. And they're six. Just, just claiming, oh. uh, just claiming like the tubes, but I have all kinds of other shit in this tank. So I'm adding these fish, everything from goldfish to pearl garamis. Yeah. Pearl garam. Oh, should I go over the list that I can remember? Shit. I got a bunch of Sid the Monkeys. These are chain loaches. Uh, the nickname is based off of their Latin name. Uh, phonetically, it sounds like Sid the Monkey. 
Anyway, so I have chain loaches. I have uh, red tailed bodia. Um, oh, is, yeah. Those I have two of them, and they're full size. And all I do is just whap the, the snails in the tank because there's MTS in there. They keep the numbers down. Uh, I have all, uh, blue eye, bristlenose, albino, long fin, lemon, <laughs> or uh, uh, bristlenose placo. I have zebra placos in there, and they're nice. Uh, I finally get six of them. Size. You've had them for what four or five months? Uh, yeah, yeah, pushing six now. I've uh, been trying to get those there slow grow, and my tank's not as hot as it should be, so they're even slower. Um, I got pearl garamis. I have lemon tetras. I have red Colombian tetras. I There's have some serpes in there. Uh, long fin special serpes that I got from uh, these fish go that I can't find anywhere else, and they are breathtaking. They're curtains. Um, I have shit. I'm trying to remember. I have Vietnamese white clouds, which are somehow different than normal white clouds. They're way more red. I've never seen anything like it. It's kind of like a cardinal tetra. Anyways, so so everything you, everything we've told you not to do. I have humpback lemias that a whole breeding colony in there. I have, uh, anyways, going down the list, the more important thing is, is I have neon dwarf rainbow fish, and I have uh, basami rainbows, and quite a few of them. And they are breathtaking and huge, and they love the flow. But as I'm adding these fish in there, I get a rainbow-specific disease. Doesn't touch a single other fish in the tank. But wipes out every single rainbow I have in the tank. Don't have a clue what happened. They immediately started to swell from the inside out. And as the end result, they fuzzed out and died immediately. It was real fast. It was some virus that <laughs> just hit my rainbow fish. Now, the only thing I can think of is maybe I did it. Because I was feeding extremely high protein food. So maybe uh, I caused it because rainbow fish over a long-term diet can't handle high, high protein all the time. It's a big, uh, big known thing. So still trying to uh, figure it out. So Adam, don't feel bad. Uh, even if you quarantine them, you still possibly can have bad luck. Well, and uh, but my whole thing is, is I've never had something just wipe out a specific group of fish where to this point where it makes no sense to me. The, the same you with know, my like rainbow if, fish, brother. If, if if I had, if I, had, I figured, you know, if I'm going to lose something, I'm going to lose, you know, Scarlet Mattis, those are touchy as Galaxy Daniels, those are touchy as you know, what, what you hell, even the shrimp, if it was a shrimp, if it was a water quality issue, you'd lose shrimp. Right. Yeah, I got the same issue. I have way delicate, more delicate fish than my rainbow fish. And those are the ones, uh, so just nailed out and nothing else was affected. I was so like, oh, Jimmy's, Jimmy's going to make fun of me for losing these Zebra Plake. Oh. <laughs> What, what just kills me is that usually with myself, the only fish that die is my favorite fish. Well, that doesn't, it doesn't it matter what it is. If it's, if it's a big ass goldfish, if it's a big pleco of some sort, whatever the one fish that I love the most in that tank, that's usually the first one. That, that's why I don't have hey, any favorite children. I don't either. Yep. <laughs> didn't, uh, what's his name? Remember when he, when we were seeing that big saltwater tank, what the hell was that guy's name? Oh, when, 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 Sean Kramer. Sean Kramer. Yeah. Remember when he told us, hey, that's my favorite fish, and we just went, oh, no, no don't no. say that. Yeah, No, don't do that. <laughs> the next day. Yeah, who, who we're talking about is, is Sean Kramer. Uh, one of my personal uh, good buddies works for, for this gentleman, and uh, they have a huge saltwater aquarium. You can find it on YouTube, and uh, they're producing a ton. You know what I mean? A ton. They're producing a ton of coral and selling coral out of this tank, and it's kind of funny t talking to Sean because Sean um, has got, what was it, 18 foot tank, 2,000 gallons, something like that? Something like that. Yeah. And, and all, all he wanted to do, people, for this tank, he just wanted to pay for his kids' college tuition. That's all he wanted to do. Yeah. Easy goal. Just, just pay for my kids' college tuition, you know? And uh, they, are, they are doing it right now. And uh, they're producing enough coral, and they're in. Um, they're also doing these contests with other coral where they're buying this crazy ass coral for a thousand dollars and you know they split up a coral between three or four guys and whoever can grow it the fastest gets bragging rights and whatnot and they're doing very very well but uh but the, the amount of money that they're spent on that thing is outrageous but the moral of the story is is this guy has this massive two thousand gallon reef tank and he says i think that's my favorite fish and i can't remember if he pointed to like some crazy expensive trigger fish it or was some the crazy expensive pain it, tang, it was like yeah. a gem tang, I think it yeah. was what it was. <laughs> and it was a, it's not just a gem tang, because gem tangs can be a, a, in and of themselves like over 3K. Yeah. Like this one was a class of gem tang above those. So I'm thinking like, you know, double that or worse. And he says, oh, that's my favorite. And we're just like, no, oh, yeah, that's gonna shut die. your mouth. Yeah. So yeah, all these, said it died a week later. The, uh, so he, 
bought this incredible cool fish that he wanted. Now, realize they're just trying to grow coral in this tank, but he wanted a couple fish in there. And they bought this fish that was super expensive. Like, I want to say, when I say super expensive, like $350 and in its juvenile form. And the person that he bought it from said, yeah, it's not going to touch your coral. And this thing grew about three times the size in two months and just grazed on coral and killed his coral. And now you got a 2,000 gallon, 18 foot tank full of coral and they're trying to get this fish out. And for four or five days, they spend three, four hours every day with nets trying to chase him and stuff. He finally got him out with a fishing pole. Fishing pole. He just sat there with a fishing pole and 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 a little tiny hook and a worm and they got it out of there. Yeah. Pretty cool. So all, even though uh, you think somebody's really got their stuff together, it's like, we're all doing stupid crap all the time. So one more thing that we get a lot of questions about, and I just want to re-clarify. We've talked about this, I think, somewhat in episode one, is you have your different 20 longs that you have near a tank with each 20 long has a different species of guppy. And you gave them a bit of a tutorial on how you handle as they drop their fry, you'll pull the parents out and then grow them out uh, if you really wanted to get creative and fancy with it. But there's also the farming method. Can you explain more of the, like, the tote pop-up hamper farming method again to the people in detail. Oh, people like that. It's only been 100 episodes since we talked about this. <sighs> 101, probably. So um, when it comes just to having your basic guppy, your multicolored guppy, your cobra guppies, your blues, your reds and stuff, um, you can buy those pretty inexpensive. And when I say inexpensive, like 25, 30 cents a piece wholesale, that's where I'm getting them from. And I'm buying two, 300 at a crack. And what I like to do is I'll bring them in and throw them in a uh, 110 gallon fish or horse trough what it is now i want to clarify this because i've done this with specific lines as well so i can do this with a ratio uh in that the same horse trough that you're talking about you can get just like let's pretend it's a moscow black mm-hmm. just moscow blacks work as well you don't have to do the the multi uh but seeing them in these troughs there's less attention to detail you have to pull them out you have to put them to cups and then you have to grade them uh, versus them being in a tank where you can see them, you can call them. So doing a mix is better when you can't see them. Right. And the, and these, these horse troughs are rubber made. They're big. They're probably three foot by five foot, hold 110 gallons of water. So 100 and, yeah, 110, 150, and I have them all the way up to 600 gallons. Yeah. These, these rubber made troughs you can buy. And you can find them on a Facebook marketplace as well. Just go to your Facebook groups that are uh, generally farmers and they'll have an old one they're kicking around. Yeah. And if you can find them, and I have found them, I've never bought them, but I, I know there's two of them right now. Uh, they have some that are in, in a light aqua blue. Now, if you get a chance to buy the light aqua blue ones, you can get the babies out of there a lot easier because you can see much better in them because mine are all black. And so what I end up doing is taking a 12 inch net and just scooping the bottom to get all the babies out because the babies love to hang on the bottom. when You've got that many adults. Mm-hmm. But what I do is I go to my local Walmart. And I bought these pop-up hampers, which are probably, I want to say, 18 inches wide or in diameter. And they stand up about three feet. And you can throw in 50 females and 10 males in one of these pop-up hampers. And as the, as the females uh, drop the fry, they will swim out of the hamper into the big tank. And then you have to hunt them down in the tank. So these pop-up hampers, and you got to make sure, you got to, uh, essentially I'd buy them in person. Or if you're willing to do the Amazon return game but they have to have those hexagonal holes. They're, they seem fine, but it's perfect space for even the biggest of uh, live fry to swim through. Yep, and, and they're like nine, 10 bucks at, at, at Wally World. Mm-hmm. And here's the trick that somebody taught me that when I was doing, I had nine of these in my warehouse and I was producing enough guppies to supply myself and, and, and 19 of my customers. I was collecting about 500 uh, babies a day. And I had so many babies, I was actually selling my fancies as feeders also. But um, I took and closed, somebody said, you know, if you close the top, so it's completely dark in there all the time, then when you pop it up, um, they, uh, you, you feed them, leave it up for 15 minutes, and then you scoop the babies and you cut it out, put it back down so the, the adults can't see the babies. So then another guy came over to my place, he goes, hey, let me one up this for you. Why don't you just take a small, little tiny Christmas light bulb, those little two watt light bulbs, and I put my my nets uh, on the end of the tank, which is like three feet away, had a little light through the, I use a piece of four by eight piece of uh, styrofoam that I would cut to fit. And I put this little Christmas light on the very end. And for some reason, those little guppies will just come to that light and just kind of sit underneath that light. So when you lift the lid, if you're quick enough, you can just scoop and get 300 babies or whatever for the day. 
So let's go over an audit of the supplies you need. Number one, you need the trough, the Rubbermaid trough. Number two, you need the pop-up hampers. Now you can put to your discretion if you want multiple pop-up hampers or just one, but in there, I would put a, a mixture of one male to every five females. Yeah. You don't need much. In fact, I've seen an entire like 100 females with three males. That really gives you the control of picking your best studs to uh, farm out because those three studs will work all those females. I mean, they'll be tired, but they'll 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 get it done. You you won't have a lapse in production because of not enough males. So don't do any more than uh, one per five. Then for the rest of the supplies, you say the foam. You said what was it? Quarter inch, half I, inch. I, I buy the half inch uh, foam. It's in four by eight sheets. That you can get from Menards is about twelve dollars a sheet, but then you can take that. I would stick with the bathroom foam. It's generally a pink, and it's already treated to have water on it with being uh, while being non toxic. Yep, it's got two different sides. It has one side with plastic on it as a vapor barrier, and one side uh, of the foam. And I always have the vapor barrier side down because when the tanks will sit there um, when they're heated, you'll have the uh, water the condensation, the condensation, and then the it'll top. drip on the outside of the tank, making a mess on um, making a mess on your carpet. Yeah, my warehouse, I didn't care. Yeah. And the other thing is, um, I would put in six, eight, four inch uh, filters, foam filters. And um, the other thing you do too is you can put one of them at a low, uh, like if you have, I had five or six of them in there, I put one that had a real low flow rate. I'd put that one right in the hamper, which then would help push the babies out of the, out of the uh, net. But it, you can you have to kind of adjust it really slow so you're not beating up your your females because they got nowhere to go you know they're right above them. But the whole trick for me was when I got that little light on each one of these tanks, then I wasn't chasing baby guppies every day. That was my favorite part of the day. I'd come in and and grab baby guppies. But if you, if you can come in with a big 12 inch net and scoop one time and get 300 you know guppies, you're you're making some money right there. And you should be able to find on Amazon a waterproof uh, tea light. That you can hook up, uh, either plug in or you can use battery if you want to keep swapping them out, but it's kind of a pain in the ass. Just finding a tiny waterproof LED light. You know, the other thing too that I never thought of until you don't need a lot. Just a second. You don't need a lot. You might be able just to actually cut a hole. If you have light in your room, you cut a small hole the size of a quarter on the opposite end of where all your adults are. That should allow enough light from the room through there, possibly, if you do some experimentation. You still have to trust that the light's going to be on. And most people shut their lights off, and then the whole process is kind of kind of dim for you. But in my warehouse, uh, I just got a message saying a guppy glory hole? Question mark Absolutely. Oh my god! Cut yourself a guppy glory hole. Wow. Absolutely. But you know, I, there's nothing more that I enjoy in the whole hobby is baby fish. And every time I come over to Robbie's, the first thing I do, I go over and I, I look to see if you have new baby cichlids. I go see if you have new baby plecos. I go over and see what else you got laying around over here. Every time I come down to your, to your something to your lair. Always something. Uh, now, the next things that you need for any tank, stick to sponge filters, multiple sponge filters across the, uh, the whole bottom. And Jimmy uses his, uh, you know, Cadillac sponge filters that he cuts out. They work great with the, with the slight bottoms. People ask, what, what do you do heat? Well, if, you're, if your house is warm, you don't really have to, but you're going to get a faster breeding schedule. If you feed them more, if you water change more, and if you turn up the heat a bit. And you'll get a faster growth rate on your babies. So, I mean, if, if you don't want to burn out your, your breeding stock, keep them at, at 74, 75, but then put your babies up to 80, 82, you'll see a much faster growth rate. Now, the, the last thing that we uh, spoke of is that you should get a, if you can get the blue tub, but most of the time you're only going to be able to get a black tub. Let's mm -hmm. be real. They're cheaper. So when you're in there, Jimmy just once a day, at least goes downstairs and just blatantly scoops the bottom, whatever he catches, he catches. Now that is the method of getting it done. Uh, use a big net. You know, lift up the pop-up hamper so you make sure to get up uh, all up underneath and then just blanket scoop to see what you can catch. My wife is not that person. She refuses to miss even one. So what she does is she grabs a flashlight and I found out the measurement. You get a 5,000 lumen flashlight off of Amazon <laughs> and you spotlight from above and the shadows the little babies create with that much light, you see them pop up easy like they're a target for you. And then you can individually they, scoop them up. Mind. What's that, Adam? And they're blind. Ah, ah. See, that's where I was very precise on 5,000 lumens, because if you go over 5,000 lumens, they will be permanently blind. <laughs> and I only know this because I've killed a lot of guppy fry <laughs> from 10,000 lumen flashlights. <laughs>
yeah, don't 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 buy that one uh, that you see advertised saying, you know, I was in the military for eight years. <laughs> And I can start a fire with this flashlight from 200 yards away. Okay, so people ask, like, how do you know they're blind? Because they're swimming in all directions. When, they, when they're, when you know, swirling and they can't see food in front of their face. They and, little seeing eye dogs. Yeah, they get real. And glasses. They get real goofy. So 5,000 or less people. <laughs> all right, that's a hard limit. So now what I'm going to try this summer is I'm going to put a bunch of ponds on the south side of my house where it's much more sunnier because last year i tried it on the east side of my house and every time i checked the temperature all summer long it was too cold right and so this year i'm just going to put out some guppies on the south side where it gets a lot more heat and the other thing i'm going to do with these tanks i'm just going to replace it with glass to see if i can get that water temperature up Ooh, greenhouse effect to, baby to 85 90 degrees during the day so during the evening it stays you know within 70 because it will cool off pretty quick that way you Northland. can land Petri dish out your guppy glory hole. I love <laughs> Now people ask like, what do you get? What do you actually produce out of these things? I've done this before. Jimmy's done this a hundred times. Oh Jesus. 150 gallon. Here's like kind of the, me- the estimated measurement from mine and Jimmy's results. 150 gallon trough with one basket full of guppies can produce easy 80 fry a day. Mm-hmm. Easy. Yeah. I kept good track for a long time and my biggest day was 750. Out of, out of the ones that I had going. And, and that was after a rainstorm, barometric pressure, everything dropped and you went in there and there's just a zoo. And anyway, I didn't chase them all down. I mean, there's a lot more in there, but I was just one scoop as I lifted up, you know, and there's a lot of damn fish in there. And uh, so when you put them all, you know, you put 300 in a, in a 20 gallon tank and stuff and you start feeding those things. I mean, you can go through a lot of damn food and a lot of brine shrimp really quick. So I learned really, very quickly to start putting them in, in bigger tanks, but when they're really tiny, you have to keep them in smaller tanks so they can find the food. It doesn't take long. After a couple, two, three weeks, you put them in a big tank and they'll chase down. For sure. Add salt. Uh, I think we gave you a ton of other recommendations. I really wouldn't worry about temperature if you're keeping them. Only add a little bit of temperature to that 76 degrees if you're breeding. You know, the only thing I can, can, can stress to everybody is get good stuff to start with. Don't, don't skimp. If you know somebody locally that you can buy from who's got good stuff, Start with that. Even if it's just 15, 20 females, that's all you, you can get. Start with that. And if you're having a bad time and you did buy the wrong one, kamikaze method, my friends. Yeah. I mean, the, the, our newest uh, place that we've been buying angelfish from, just, just dead set. I mean, I've got angelfish now that are acting like angelfish, breeding like angelfish, and come in and they're fat and they're sassy and they're aggressive um, compared to when I was trying to import some of this stuff. It just comes in and they're they're lethargic they're skinny they got parasites they look they look a lot like you rob thank you i've never been called skinny before but that's okay (laughs) i said pathetic too oh lethargic (laughs) such jerks let's see here i'm trying to see if there's any questions just to make sure which is easier madaka rice fish or guppies you know guppies guppies for me but rice fish i don't have a problem with rice fish don't get me wrong that's a close comparison a rice fish i'm not as good as farming and prolific as farming but i have bred them that's more of the set it and forget it type of thing. That's where you put out a pond in your backyard. There is no scooping. There is nothing. You just make sure it's a maintained thing. And then you pull a thousand of them out at the end of the year. I mean, wasn't Anthony doing just a ton of rice fish? Yes. And stuff. And he was just doing it outdoors. But, yep. But he's a little bit farther south than the rest of us. So he's got better weather and stuff. I mean, up here in the Northland, we only got probably 90 days to put stuff outside. Yep. And uh, What you don't do is you have electrical uh, electricians come to your house and knock out your airline and then kill your Madaka rice fish. That's what you don't need. They can't survive that for some reason. Um, let's see here. When you hire the cheapest of the cheap, that's what you get, Rob. Spend a little dough. Yeah, right. there you go. Uh, in your measurements, Jimmy, what is a question from a user? Live food, how much difference do you see like uh, as a measurement from production of dry food to live food 30 percent easy 30 percent easy actually i felt that was going to be more yeah no i mean uh, and if it's aquion food it's like 70 percent. if it's aquion oh, oh. food they will shit gold uh like the golden goose pooping out gold nuggets yeah it's like what, what's that alcoholic drink with yeah. the gold shavings oh gold uh, schlager gold schlager, yeah, it's yeah. Gold schlager for for goldfish <laughs> i mean if you want to you want to increase production with, with brine shrimp, go from three feedings a day to five feedings a day, and you'll have another additional bump. And the thing is, <laughs> just remember, the more you're feeding, the more you're changing water. So if you can do automatic water changes, uh, more power to you. Um, but, I mean, like I said, you watch these professional people that are feeding 10, 12 times a day. They're almost hourly. Right. 
you know, and we watched them hatching brine shrimp and they had what, uh, I think it was a 300 gallon vat of brine shrimp going. Yeah. yeah. And it's it aggressive shit. up in a silo. I mean, they're, 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 they're hatching out a can of brine shrimp, a 16 ounce can of brine shrimp a day. Pop can. the top baby. And just pour it in. Like you three, just yeah. can't stop. Yeah. And these guys were going up and down the, uh, up and down the lines with all these guppies with beer pitchers full of brine shrimp. Just going, boom, just Now slumping. the question is, is uh, when you go to Hooters or when you go to this place, which has better tits holding those, <laughs> those things of beer? You know, brine shrimp and the Hooters outfit. I can see it. Could you see it, Jimmy? Hooters is a wonderful thing. <laughs> I love Hooters. <laughs> and they wonder why I call us misogynistic. All right. You are. Yeah. So we guys, have a lot of women listening to this podcast. Thanks, Rob. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. You know, you shit on Aquion. I can at least be misogynistic. Wow. You know, uh, it, it's it's funny that I'm the voice of reason around here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that scares the shit out of me. If you it don't. is <laughs> terrifying. Yeah. And to think I'm the sober one. Uh, <laughs> the sober one. I'm the sober one. Um, just going a, a bit of cleanup. So normally we don't tell you what's going to happen next in the Aquarium Guys podcast. <laughs> a bit of cleanup. A bit of cleanup. Clean up an aisle seven. Uh, normally we don't tell you what's going to be happening coming up in future episodes of the Aquarium Guys podcast, but I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a listen. So next one. Uh, we're hoping to have, considering his mic jack doesn't explode again, uh, Oliver from Oliver's Aquatic Garden on the podcast to talk about paludariums. Uh, that's been requested by quite a few different people, so I'm excited to get him on. He's been a fan of ours since the very beginning and part of Discord. Time to source some knowledge in-house, Jimmy. <laughs> there we go. Uh, another podcast that we're going to be doing is we put out a meme in one of the podcasts that you guys did not attend, Jimmy and Adam. We had a, a bit of a meme where... I don't know. We spoke about having a fish room in the bathroom. It was one of our weird. Tangents. Oh, that's right. We started doing that. And then I don't know. I went on vacation or something. Yeah. You went on vacation. So what we did is we just out of a joke, I said, whoever can send me, cause we were talking about the, f- the fish tank in my bathroom. So I, I watch hermit crabs wrestle while I take a shit. So I said, <laughs> wait, if- wait a minute. Are you watching it in the tank or are you just watching it down between your legs? No, no, no. In the tank. Okay. Yeah. Which is right to my right. I mean, it's inches away while I'm shitting. Right. Like I can touch the aquarium those with my nose crabs. while shitting. Yeah. Those are different crabs. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, so we, we, we put an APB out to the world saying, if you have aquariums in your bathroom, submit a picture to aquarium guys podcast. And by the end of the year, we'll pick a winner. Well, let me tell you, we got a guy. We got a guy. We got a guy that his entire bathroom is his fish room. <laughs> so he sent in a picture and it's gold. It's going to be the cover of the episode for the podcast that we're going to do with him. We're going to do an interview with that guy about doing a fish room in your shitter. I'm excited. I'm so excited. I'm excited. He even, he was such a good sport. He took a picture of him on the shitter with a fish magazine. So it's going to be a great interview. <laughs> I'm scared. Yeah, if you're sick of deep dives and just want to go uh, with how you need to piss your wife off more, this is the podcast for you that's coming up. Uh, we still am trying to get locked down the Axolotl podcast. We've been working back and forth with that one. Oh, boy. Dalton, what was some of the other ones we talked about? Well, I think we are researching ways to kill off some uh, trumpet snails. Ah. We, we had uh, you we had a Discord supporter. Well, yeah, I agree. But he, I, I think he had a whole experiment going. It was... Yes. It so was well formed, well thought out. This one will have to be uh, be delayed. So we talked about this another podcast. What, Jimmy, what, did it involve nuclear fission? Because he can't can kill him. Kind of what I'm saying. <laughs> nuclear fission. Yeah. So we we have a uh, gentleman named Pax. He's in their Discord. He's in Alaska, and he w- wanted to Poor take Pax, our yeah. idea of taking MTS Malaysian trumpet snails, a awful pest snail, and see what it literally takes in a lab environment to kill them. So we were going to, we shot every type of idea at him and he was going to prepare test tanks where you urinate in a tank, where you get iodine in a tank, where any idea you want to try to kill trumpet snails with, and he's going to document what it takes to really kill trumpet snails out of an aquarium. So that was the idea. However, he found out that PETA got all of him. He found out that these cool little blonde trumpet snails are not trumpet snails at all. And they are a new invasive pest that's blowing up across the uh, aquarium culture right now called new zealand mud snails they've been around I for a while some. i want some adam goes they've been around for a while but the problem is is now they're beginning to explode kind of like moss balls with uh um, zebra mussels this is now the new pest that's uh, happening and there's not enough education for it at least we got the education out for zebra mussels and right now if you go to your pet store i guarantee you there's no zebra mussels in your moss balls this particular snail looks very similar it's got that same cone style uh, shell, but it's half the size of an MTS, blonde, and they are much worse. 
than an MT, uh, MTS snail, the Malaysian trumpet snail. They are awful. They are, uh, I don't know if they're federally legal, but most states flat ban them, including the state that he, he's in, but he didn't purchase them. They came as a hitchhiker to his aquarium. So I think that he's... Them, send them to Rob. He's going to destroy that aquarium, uh, move on, and do the actual MTS test, but it will take time for him to get MTS, get the MTS culture going, and do the test. So I have been trying to reach out to experts in the uh, invasive species area, trying to find an expert to bring on the podcast, talking about these terrible snails and really the scary impact they're going to have on the aquarium hobby and the effects. So if you know of an expert in the zebra mud snail, please email us at the aquarium guys podcast at gmail.com. I've been reaching out to plenty of people with many PhDs. I have uh, unfortunately not come uh, with success, but that is another one we have to do for the sake of our uh, hobby. The, uh, I just read an article today about Japan has found some new snails and they're doing a whole bunch of research on them too. And they look like Malaysian trumpet snails. That's why I clicked on it. Might, trying, might be. I'm trying to find it right now, but I can't find it as, as we're talking here. Um, if you want pictures, certainly pop into our Discord. We can direct you to the pictures. And we've found quite a few of our uh, listening audience that has them or had knows someone with them. We would like to educate you as much as possible to know exactly what they are, identify them, and eradicate them. Because they do massive harm to aquarium but more importantly if they touch a natural waterway there's no going back cool something i wanted to share really quick the uh we just came back from vacation we were on vacation for about 10 days we took a cruise out of miami went and visited punta gorda dominican republic and then we went over to the u.s virgin islands and while we're in the u.s virgin islands we took a ride on a boat to go out snorkeling and we went on these little sea scooters Find out that we get there. The people that are running it are from Wisconsin. That they went to, the, they went over there on vacation a few years ago and never went back home. They went home and sold their house and went back to the. the, the so this is St. Thomas, I believe. Anyway, what was the cool thing is they took us out about three miles off the coast into this little area so we could go snorkeling and riding these little sea scooters. And we watched blue tangs breeding. My wife and I watched blue tangs breeding for about 15 feet below us, and it was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen out in the wild these the only reason it, it caught our attention is that the male blue tang was swimming in circles like eight ten foot circles at the speed of sound he was going around so fast and i thought oh great he's dying and now sharks are gonna come in here and eat him and then eat me now you know why they're so hard to breed in captivity yeah and so the female would come out of this area through the rocks it must be a little rock cave down there and she'd come out there and drop her eggs and he'd come by there and do his thing and this went on for like 20 minutes and we watched them for probably 10, 10 minutes. And then we went off and when we came back, they were still going at it, but it was some of the most coolest, uh, probably the best uh, snorkeling I've ever done. We've done uh, snorkeling in probably about six locations now. And this is in the U S Virgin Islands. So if you get a chance and you're on, you're on vacation, um, this place goes out there and, and takes you out there on these little sea scooters. And what they look like is like a little tiny floating motorcycle and you put your head in this diving bell and they drop you down about eight feet and what was so weird about it um there's a shipwreck 55 feet below us and because of the distortion of this diving bell on your head it looks like you were going to be able to touch it with your feet wow and so i really got a cool perspective of what living in a freaking round fishbowl would be like and how horrible it would be because it was so distorted but they drop you down about eight ten feet and there's a big balloon that's attached so that people can see that you're underneath there and they had 15 of us underneath on this scooter. So we went snorkeling for quite a while, then we went on this little sea scooter. And it was probably the best money we spent on vacation. It was just so cool. And the water was 77 degrees when we got there. And this was the uh, second week of December when we were over there. I'd highly recommend if you can go out and watch these fish in their natural habitat. It just gives you such a deep, deep appreciation of, of how cool nature is when they actually see stuff like that that you see in aquariums and whatnot. I pissed myself when a six foot nurse shark came by. And I'm like, shark! And they go, nurse shark. And I go, I don't want it nursing me. My nipples are going to get hard, you know? But Thank you for that image. Yeah. That'll never leave my brain. That's a new tattoo. What didn't happen? Yeah, that's right. There's a, there's a lot of fish, too, that looked like a northern pike. I don't know what it was, some sort of barracuda-looking fish. And then that was about four and a half, five feet. But they said there's no reason for, like, major sharks to come into this area because there's no food for them. You know, they're not looking to eat little tiny damselfish and whatnot. So, so sure. it's super cool. Uh, last one, and this is a long shot. I need your help. I'm calling all Aquarium Guys listeners. If you're listening to this, uh, don't harass the guy. I don't want you to dox someone. But if you know of this man, know him personally or know a friend of a friend, 
I'd like you to politely reach out. Now, you guys have been a double-edged sword for me in the past. There have been other people, experts, and content creators that you've reached out to and harassed the shit out of. <laughs> this is not what I need from you people. I need... I need you to put on your big boy pants. I need your respect and politeness. Put your courteous foot forward. There's a gentleman named Cortland. I'm pulling up his last name here. Cortland Hunt. He is in the Florida area, I believe Tampa, if I'm not mistaken. And this gentleman was famous. He's one of those Florida men for taking an underwater Glock and shooting lionfish, point blank. Uh, I want him on the podcast so fucking bad. Um, <laughs> he goes out and, and wastes lionfish yeah this is about you know he probably got famous about eight years ago or so for uh, going down on, on diving expeditions and that's all he did and him and his buddies would go out and they'd film it and they'd find all these invasive lionfish killing you know areas and they just shoot them point blank in the face is that why you want everybody to be super nice because this guy has a glock and he may come after you well, well that's one but two i want him on the podcast and if i have you f***ing weirdos going out there trying to harass the guy <laughs> he'll never come on so be nice if you know him message us according guys podcast gmail.com i have messaged him on facebook i have got a message back from him so maybe I'm going to get lucky and have him on the podcast. But not only is he that uh, just a fantastic f***ing story altogether, but this guy is a Jeremy Wade in, in his own right. Uh, he's a world-renowned fisherman that goes around fishing river monsters and doing different expeditions. So he's a wealth of fish knowledge deep in the heart of the places that we get all our aquarium fish from. I cannot explain what a fun guest this would be. So if you know Cortland Hunt in the Tampa area, uh, the fish block man, I would love for him to come on and tell us how he locks fish and and uh, his other expedition, please. That'd be a good so t-shirt. He, he lives in Anna Maria Island specifically, or he, he, he's around there. But let people harass him, man. The guy shooting Glocks underwater, he can handle himself. Let him harass him. <laughs> there get you him go. The no, don't, don't harass him. Get somebody's... Right? Get, kiss my ass. We're going to get somebody's ass capped. That's what the, we aquarium, the Aquarium Guys podcast does not support this. You don't, you guys don't understand. You guys are the best and worst fans all at the same time. You guys engage with me. You come on. You help support the podcast. You, you, you give us a little bit of your money to keep this thing going and help get Dalton paid somewhat. But <laughs> on the other hand, you guys will go out. You'll harass YouTubers. Get me banned from places that have never met people before. You guys are just the best and worst all at the same you, time. You sound so. like somebody I know from January 6th. <laughs> See? See? <laughs> you people are bad because you're getting me in trouble. Yeah, you're getting me in trouble. I don't need this. I didn't want you to do that. I didn't want you to go there. We didn't need... Wait, wait. are we banned from certain things? Yes. <laughs> if you, There are a couple places in this world that if you say, I'm part of the Aquarium Guys podcast, they'll close the door. <laughs> Where? Where? Well, I, I can tell you a couple of them. I mean, wh one of them's a, uh, an aquarium that heard that you uh, bleached some... some Blue ring octopus. That's for one. <laughs> well, and know. Aquion. You just f us with yeah, Aquion. 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 All right. I don't yeah, want to hear it. Don't, you don't, don't pretend that you did that to us. This, this is going to be our next podcast is, is how Aquion hired Guac guy to come shoot us. Yeah. Guac. Guac. <laughs> Can I get a table side Glock, please? <laughs> Guac, Glock. Same thing. <laughs> one's like one's an appetizer. Gun. One's a gun. All right. We're too far down the beer. One last uh, tangent. I'm not going to tell the guy's name because he was he was really nice. I got a private message from one of our fans, and I just wanted wanted to thank him. He reached out and uh, said that uh, you know we're a bit of an inspiration. He he loves us. We got him we got him through a couple depressed times in his life, and uh, reached out to us and uh, said uh, how he was uh, really admiring me <laughs> for saying that uh, I don't drink at all and you know how he is a recovering alcoholic and he's been you know thousands of days sober and it was just a really good inspiration for him and uh, I, I told him you know hey man I appreciate that I could help you out and I, you know I gave you a moment but I've never drank uh, and he said that's even more of an inspiration for him so uh, thank you buddy uh, now Jimmy can you call that up for him? How, how, about, how about all the people that we've driven to drink you know, think about that. How many people are normal and they're like, Jesus, I can't even drink this. Yeah, this, they're, like, this right. they're sitting by their aquarium, or aquarium doing a water change and they're just like, you know what? I'm going to open that beer up for the first time yeah. in 25 years. I just listened to, to, to podcast number 102 and I'm like, I'm, I got to start drinking. I'm just, I just want to thank you for the marketing department. Before we get silly, <laughs> before we get silly, I just wanted to thank him. You know, uh, if uh, I'm glad I was inspiration somewhat to you and in any way, if a uh, positive uh, effect and great. And, you know, thank you for sharing because regardless, it meant to, it meant a lot to me. So. All right, gentlemen, anything else? I'm just wondering how many people that we've, we've gotten to, you know, do hookers and blow. I'm just saying. 
when this episode comes out, hashtag. We don't want to know. <laughs> exactly. When this episode comes out, hashtag Guppy Glory Hole. I want to see it trend. No, I don't want to see that. <laughs> uh, until next time, fell- fellers. Thanks, guys, for listening to the podcast. Please go to your favorite place where podcasts are found, whether it be Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, wherever they can be found. Like, subscribe, and make sure you get push notifications directly to your phone so you don't miss great content like this. Put a little bit of Adam Lambert uh, sprinkled dust on my face. I don't want it nursing me. My nipples are going to get hard. <laughs> Apply it to my ass. Woohoo! Please get in there. Your mother. I'm trying to whack. Cut yourself a guppy glory hole. <laughs> <laughs>